Allahu Welcome to our audience that is viewing from home during this lockdown. Um, my name is Kashmir Maryam and this is my sister Aisha. Aisha, would you like to introduce yourself and what we do as the Strangers Organization? Yes, assalamu alaikum, uh, bismillahi wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, my name is Aisha and I am part of an organization called The Strangers and our goal is to revive the message of Islam and we do this through uh, different different means. One of the means is through spoken word poetry, through the collective voice of Muslim poets around the world um, and just being able to clear up misconceptions. So that's our main goal. Um, yes, Kash. Yeah, excellent. Jazakallah khair. Uh, so the work that we do as the strangers is we host a lot of uh, poetry slams. A lot of the time they're, um, you know, in person. And so we have our poets go up on stage. They compete for trophies um, and prizes. And we just have a good time. It's basically to platform the Muslim voice so that we can portray the true message of Islam through the art of spoken word poetry. Um, so it's a creative yes. art, it's something that is uh, powerful and empowering. Um, and that's what we wanted to do for you today. So we have a great show lined up for you all. Um, we hope that you enjoy watching. Um, and I just wanted to clarify a few things that are a little bit different about uh, slam poetry uh, versus written poetry or any other type of poetry, Shakespeare, whatever, you, whatever type of poetry you are into. Um, so the difference between slam poetry is that it is um, about the content of the poem, so how deep is the lyrical content, how um, how relevant is it to the audience, how how powerful is the 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 methods that are used to articulate what is being said in the poem, and second of all, um, the the powerful thing about slam poetry and probably one of the more important traits of slam poetry is that it is heavily about the way in which the message is revealed to the audience. So it's not just about reading from a sheet of paper, it's about how that message is delivered. Um, so that's something that we put a lot of emphasis on as the strangers and we do uh, with all of our poets as well. So inshallah today you'll be hearing some slam poetry and um, I hope that you enjoy the show and all of the poets that we have lined up. Uh, there are three simple rules that we have for the poets. That is number one, the content has to be um, appropriate, so no curse words. Um, uh, there, there is no inappropriate content, um, and our poets do understand that. The second rule is that uh, we have to make sure that the poem is under five minutes. Um, and number three is just to be respectful of everyone that is up there performing. Everyone is sharing something that is meaningful to them, and that's something very personal, and we have to respect that because that's very sanctified. Um, so yeah, so without any further ado, I would like to introduce our judge for this evening. Her name is Tahani Salah. Is Tahani there? I'm here. As Assalamu alaikum, Tahani. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, we're doing good. Perfect. So I have Tahani your bio here. I'm just going to read it. And um, hopefully that will explain to everyone your background in poetry. I personally, I know Tahani from before. Um, she's a slam poet. So she knows a thing or two, or more than a thing or two about performance. And that's one of the reasons we chose to have her on our platform today. Um, and that's something that means a lot to us because I think to be a writer is one thing, but to be a performer is something, um, is something else. So, uh, Jazakallah her for joining us today. Thank so, you. Tahani Salah is an educator, poet, and activist based in Brooklyn, New York, with a bloodline to Palestine. She's a graduate of Columbia University, a former professor of curriculum development at the Cooney Graduate Center. She's also a member of the New York Rican Slam team. She competed internationally and holds many slam titles from Europe to Africa. Tani has also been featured on HBO's Deaf Poetry Jam. She is a passionate about peace and activism and carries that into the classroom as an educator, showing how life creates art and using it all as a tool of expression. As an artist dedicated to bringing light and solutions to communities where people's voices have been silenced, Sahani has performed at a number of world famous stages, including the Apollo Theater in New York City, to universities in the US, South Africa, Germany, Canada, Palestine, Jordan, and many more. <laughs> Mashallah. Okay, so Sahani, you told me to pick one or two lines from your bio, but I felt like everyone needed to hear that. 
Um, so welcome. Okay, our next poet is called Sister Fatima Muhammad. She will be performing and she will introduce herself right now. So sister, the stage is yours. Thank you, Saiko. My name is Fatima Muhammad. I'm from New York City, originally from Yemen. And the title of my piece is A Love Letter to Those Who Can No Longer Read. Is okay? Connection is perfect. Okay, for you. A love letter to those who can no longer read. Baba laid so still in mom's lap with maroon rivers gushing onto the ripped furniture as I approached him asking him to wake up. My mother hovered over his body. Silently, she hugged him tighter than usual, refusing to allow me to see, but Baba, you loved to play dead with me. So I walked a bit closer and put my doll dressed in white to the side. And when I stained it in red, I started to cry. It's a pretty dress, Baba. Get up, won't you see? They misunderstood, cleaned Baba up, wrapped him in white. Had I known I would have fell in love with the stains, maybe then Baba would have stayed. Baba, I'm in love with the color red now and gray skies don't scare me. I promise white is no longer my favorite color and my doll is still dressed in that same stained dress just like the day you left me. The drones that decorate the skies aren't that bad. They're the alarms that wake us up in the morning and the rubble that scatters the streets isn't that bad. We use the cement rocks to play hopscotch, you see. And Baba, my best friends fell in love with white too wrapped and tucked safely beneath the ground. Mom Pinky promised that she'd stay with me, but isn't that what you said too? And now look at you six feet beneath the concrete, you see? I'm confused, Baba, what's the big deal? Mom says I'm not supposed to know the outline of my rib cage and that my stomach shouldn't constantly sing at night. She says I should know my alphabet by now and that I shouldn't know what a decapitated body looks like, that cemeteries shouldn't be where I find my peace. She says I shouldn't be so comfortable dancing with death during day and night, tiptoeing on the brink of insanity, that the sight of blood shouldn't comfort me, but it reminds me of you, don't they see? And if they don't, then you tell me, tell me how much louder should I plead? How much longer are you playing this game of hide and seek? Baba, do you not plan on returning? Not even once. Can I come and see what it's like where the skies don't rain bullets and where the screams of children don't echo the streets, where we live every day as though it's the last, metaphorically, where birds aren't afraid of our skies and people go to the waters for pleasure, not to collect dead bodies, a world where death is a stranger, not a relief. Where my doll won't get stained in red, and you'd wake up from playing dead, where Arda Yemen didn't constantly bleed, and where they wouldn't call our murder a side effect of an unfortunate calamity, where our purposeful starvation wouldn't be referred to as a personal tragedy, a humanitarian crisis, but a slow, violent genocide and where the world wouldn't just continue turning a blind eye, a world where I wouldn't have to write all my love letters to those who can no longer read, a world where peace would quit its game of hide and seek, where we live every day as though it's the last, strictly, purely, metaphorically. Jazakum <laughs> khair. Well, that was very helpful, helpful. I can hear myself echo. <laughs> okay, I'm back on. Um, Jazakallah for that piece, sister. It was extremely, extremely powerful. I remember the um, submission as well. Uh, it was definitely one of the most memorable ones. Um, mm -hmm. Sister Tahani, Sister Kashmir. MashaAllah, it's, it's a very touching piece and it, um, the imagery is something so strong, MashaAllah. Like I said with one of the other poets earlier, it's, um, it's very beautiful to see that uh, someone can embody the emotion and give you the story image by image. And you all give us like a time, a time frame of what was happening. And uh, Tabarakallah, sometimes that's very uh, hard for an artist to to relay that, so you did a very good job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely agree with you all. 
And I just wanted to ask you, Sister Fatima, what inspires you to write? I started writing recently, actually. I started, my first poem was after the travel ban. I've always loved to write. I just didn't know like what outlet to start writing in. And I just, poet sounded just too big for me. I was like, I'm not a poet. So I first wrote that piece and then I performed it. And then my friends were like, this is good. You should write more. And that's just sort of how it, how it went. But I'm very attached to my home country, Yemen. And I've always felt their struggle, even though I'm not living there. It's pure arbitrary, arbitrariness that I'm here and they're there. So I've always wanted to tell their stories in the way I knew best. And poetry was that outlet for me. Yes, and thank you so much, Jazakallah Khair. And a lot of people don't pay attention to what is happening in Yemen right now. And I think that it's beautiful that you highlight that and that that's something that you're passionate about, even though you're not living in Yemen right now. So Jazakallah Khair for that. And if anyone would like to follow your work or read more, um, if you have any social media or published work. I'm on Instagram. My handle is F2 underscore is A-T-I-M-A-A-A. I'll leave it in the comments um, so if anybody wants to see it. But if you want to see some of my work, you can go there, inshallah. And inshallah, you, I perform more in the future. Definitely. We would love to have you on. We'll have many more of these, inshallah. And, um, you know, you're now one of our part of our family. So, jazakallah khair. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and definitely type in your social, um, your whatever your name is on Instagram. Um, so people can follow you and I'm sure that they will check that in the comments inshallah thank you so much I appreciate it uh, I want to thank everyone here I want to thank primarily uh, for hosting this on their platform every single year when we host this it's just an amazing success and I can say alhamdulillah from the bottom of my heart I think this was phenomenally successful so jazakallah khair I want to say a special jazakallah khair to uh, Tahani for doing this for doing the very very difficult job of judging it can never be thank you so much and may Allah reward you and um, and uh, you know for taking the time out you're also a mother so you know it, I know it's difficult juggling uh, duties so you know, I will be for that and um, yeah do you have any closing remarks Aisha? Um, I just wanted to say that um, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless all of the viewers for attending. Um, I pray that we all benefited from the event without our poets. Um, now, saying that as well, um, I'm not sure if you can see me. Okay, you can see me now. Um, no further ado, uh, you can find The Strangers on Instagram. Our website is in the works, inshallah. So please do uh, definitely follow up with more information about the Uyghur campaign, uh, which is a current campaign that we're doing. We hope you enjoyed the letter, the final compilation. Um, a lot of heart went into it from our poets. And thank you again to everyone. And of course, Sister Tahani, you did an amazing job. Jazakul Khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And Ikna. Of course, Ikna. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly i just want to say the greatest thank you to all of our poets for contributing their pieces it was mind-blowing and touched my heart and i'm sincerely saying that as someone who's been to a lot of poetry slams and had a lot of poetry over the years as tahani and as aisha can both attest to we had an amazing level of talent tonight and um, so may allah reward you all and yeah i'm gonna close it right there and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh